Hey, Greg here, founder of www.wrestling-divas.web.com, your source for highlighting the most beautiful and deadly entertainers in professional wrestling. My next special guest has established herself as one of the top glamour and fashion models in the East Coast, but has also enjoyed success as an actress, comic book hero, and manager in professional wrestling. She currently portrays the character Victoria Angel in the Red Hot, no pun intended, comic book series Red Angel, and has enjoyed success in the professional wrestling industry for over 15 years now, being the manager of the likes of New Jack and Jerry Lynn. She has also been voted Pro Wrestling Manager of the Year multiple times in a row. So I'd like to welcome my next special guest, the Italian princess of pro wrestling, Awesome, Amy Vitelli. Hi, Amy. How are you? And I'm so glad I nailed that intro. That has made my day. <laughs> that was awesome. You did great. I am doing wonderful. How about you? I'm doing awesome. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Before, <laughs> before we get to your um, career in uh, multiple industries, uh, you do have a couple of events coming up. One is the... Orlando Comic Con um, coming up next month, and you'll be attending. And you'll also be attending uh, the Geek Fest the next month after um, as a judge for a costume contest. So would you please tell us more about those two events and why fans should attend, even if they're not fans of comic book or geeky stuff? Um, basically, people should attend because it's cool. You, It's not only... Um, like, if you're a photographer or you like to take pictures of uh, unique things, then the comic book conventions are the best thing to go to because you have all these people dressed up in cosplay with all these different creations from um, movies, cartoons, TV shows that you love uh, while you were watching, um, while you were growing up as a kid and watching presently. So that alone, just for pure entertainment purposes, you should go. And not only that, they usually have special guests there from your uh, special TV shows um, when you were growing up when you were a kid and also what you see presently. And that gives you a chance to take pictures with your favorite uh, celebrity stars as well as getting autographs and even getting uh, merchandise as well. So it's it's a great um, experience. And, yes, I am doing the Orlando Comic-Con um, next month, which is uh, September 23rd. I'll be promoting Red Angel. And then I am doing Geek Fest on November 18th, um, where I will be a special guest celebrity of a cosplay contest. So um, I'll be the special guest judge uh, for that. And, um when my vote in on the select, you know, the the best of the best there. So everybody has to get their game on and put all that they they know and put their all into their in their costumes because I'm going to be judging you. So be ready. <laughs> well, all you have to do for fans to attend is drop the name Amy Vitale, and boom, they're there. They're lined up. So <laughs> I'm sure you'll get a lot of uh, good feedback and good hits on uh, your current project, which is Red Angel, a comic book series by uh, What the Flux Comics. And I have to be careful of how I pronounce that name, but I'm glad I got that right, too. Um, and I, I think what stands out to me personally and you being involved with this project is what the character, the lead character, Victoria Angel, is. Um, she's a very strong, very powerful, very passionate go-getter. Uh, and, you know, you stated in other interviews that you never play in acting or in modeling. You never betray a character that very weak and vulnerable and waiting for her knight in shining armor to save her. So what does it mean to you to be um, involved with this project and other projects that portray uh, such headstrong ladies in uh, whatever you're doing? Um, The reason why I I like doing this is um, it's all about girl power and uh, women ourselves are making quite a stand, whether it be in politics, movies, 
um, and just everyday life. And, um, yeah, sure, I can play that weak link, oh, screaming and getting scared and stuff like that. And I have no problem playing those roles. But it's kind of played out. You know, how many times can you hear a woman scream and and run and they trip and, you know, they, oh, oh, I forgot my shampoo. And she goes up and she gets killed. You know, she plays the dumb blonde or whatever like that. And uh, it gets played out, you know. It's like, okay, I want to choke this girl right now. Uh, enough is enough already. You are incredibly stupid. If I was that stupid, oh, my gosh, I deserve to get killed by a Freddy Krueger or Jason as well. Um, I believe in, um, you know, girl power. And Victoria Angel um uh, meets all those requirements, and she is a very strong-willed person, which is sort of like how I am. Plus, she has red hair, so like I do, so that's a added plus. And um, it, it's about a story where she's the captain of her airship, the Red Angel. Um, she has a whole crew. Uh, she's looking out for the greater good of the people. But uh, the enemy at hand, the GTTC, um, actually killed her family in in the comic, you know, in the story. And she is going to seek revenge. Of course, she didn't know at first it was GTTC, but she eventually finds out and starts putting together, you know, maybe they're all not what they say they are, you know. And um, she goes on that uh, rampant, roaring revenge, you know. So um, it's almost like a, how would you say, like almost like a Kill Bill or something, but back in steampunk times. Um, there's no superpowers. There's no none of that. It's all about sword fighting, gunslinging, uh, robots, uh, steampunk airships, Um Something very, very different because remember, this is back in the 1800s. So um, it just shows you that you don't need to have superpowers to be a superwoman. We have superwomen all throughout the world every day, and that's what makes each one of these women um, special is because their uniqueness, their charisma, and their personality, and their inner beauty and outside beauty as well. Well, uh, what I noticed from Red Angel was that it's a huge cult hit amongst uh, fans, especially around your area. So moving forward, how would you like to see that comic book series progress? I mean, I'm sure you'd like to see the um, uh, the faraway dream of it being picked up as possibly a TV show or a web series, but uh, would you like to see um, Red Angel kind of cross paths with another uh, sort of genre or just be involved with another medium because oftentimes, you know, comic book stories and uh, characters be involved with, you know, other series or other, you know, characters from other comic books. Would you like to see any of that um, go down in Red Angel? Um, I'm not saying it will or will not happen. Um, There's been talks. Um, we just have to see how it plays out. I, I want the best for Red Angel. Um, I do want to see it get into a like a TV show or a movie. I wanted to I want to see it progress. I, I definitely want it to be um, on the same level as like Wonder Woman and you know like a household name um, because it's so unique. It's different. It's different from what's out there. So. Um, Whatever happens, we're going to go with the flow. I do believe that good things are coming, you know, are going to unfold. Um, Things have already turned out great for Red Angel. And I know that there is more on the horizon for Red Angel. And it's just going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm really excited on the adventures I'm taking with the comic book, with the people involved. It, it's just a wonderful experience, and I'm really excited. Well, that sounds fantastic, and it certainly sounds like it's going to continue to grow. Uh, and certainly you are a woman of many talents, um, and fans would probably remember you from your uh, days 
as a professional wrestling manager. And in our first interview that we did that's on my website, uh, we went into a lot of what managing is and how managing affects wrestling today. And unfortunately, especially this current generation, people in professional wrestling, the young fans who watch the WWE or whatever, don't even know who a manager is. It's not really, you know, explained to them in the storyline like it was back in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Um, and, and that, to me, is unfortunate. But I've always heard that one of the keys for being a good manager is to put all the emphasis and all of the heat and all of the cheering on your client, on the one that you're promoting, instead of you, the manager yourself. So how does a manager accomplish this difficult goal in uh, working a match for the client? Um, basically, you have to know your role, um, and your role is to focus uh, all the heat, all the the fans' attention to what's going on. Yeah, you're going to interfere in the match and everything, but even that interfering is somehow going to um, work with, again, putting the focus on the wrestler, putting uh, the focus on what's going on. Um, you should have a very um, special bond with your wrestler uh, or your client, I should say. Um, it's very important. If you don't have that bond with them, I mean, that, and I'm talking about, like, working together, um, developing characters together, uh, it's basically role-playing. It's almost like a skit, an act, a movie, a TV show. You have to have that uh, charisma between the both of you. If you do not have that charisma, if there is like you, let's just say you guys don't get along, there's going to be issues. There's going to be cracks. People are going to see it. You have to, I've always said, even with wrestlers, um, they have to work on their character. And that goes all the way down to um, the ring attire and everything like that. You have to be that character, and you have to go how um, the crowd is going, what movement they're taking. Um, if you find them getting bored, you have to spice things up a little bit. Um, whether you're a face or a good guy, you got to get that crowd going. Slap on the mat, clap your hands. Same thing as a heel or a bad guy. You have to interfere a little bit, yell and stuff, and put that attention back into that match. It's so important to have that kind of uh, charisma, and, and vice versa. The wrestler has to have it with you. But you got to remember, as a manager, you're not the star. I mean, you are like a co-star, but that attention needs to be focused on that match. You cannot be stealing the attention away all the time unless it calls for it in the match. So, um yeah, I, I guess people shouldn't get ahead of themselves, don't get full of themselves. Um, it's really important to have that special bond with your your client and um, just really take the role seriously. If you're really serious about wrestling, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is not the playground. This is where the big boys play. And I say that because it's still a man's world. Um, in most cases, like WWE and everything like that, and even with women, if you're in the women's uh, division, it this is where the big boys play, and if you're in the women's division, this is where the big girls play. This is not a playground. So you got to take it seriously and, you know, have that special charisma and give it your all to make sure that attention is still on that match. One thing that um, I've noticed when comparing managers in wrestling uh, from today to, to yesterday is that managers back then had, like you said, outstanding, over-the-top, uh, well, not necessarily over-over-the-top, but over-the-top personalities to help supplement their clients and uh, make them stand out a little bit more. And your wrestling character is the Italian princess of pro wrestling, modeled after the likes of uh, Victoria Gotti and uh, Paris Hilton, some of the you know, bratty, rich, Italiano 
women who have uh, come into entertainment and whatnot. And another thing that you mentioned in our interview was that you consider managing to be much like an acting role. But to me, wrestling is a lot different um, from acting. So where do you see a manager role come into play as an acting role, and how do you separate the two? Um, it, it's basically wrestling and managing is um, there's role playing. That's why I would say it's an acting role. Um, there's skits. You, you you guys would do skits like in WWE. I know I used to do skits. Not all the independent promotions do that. They don't have the finances, the time, the equipment to do skits all the time. I did a lot of skits with um, uh, FOW um, or uh, D1PW, actually. That's who I did a lot of skits with. We did a lot of little things where we did something where my guy lost a match, and there was a bet going on that my guy wouldn't lose the match. If my guy loses a match, then um, actually we did a, a skit with Tito Puente Jr. He's the son of Tweet, the, the singer Tito Puente, or the musician. And um, I had to play as a roadie for Tito Puente Jr. because my guy lost. So that's what I'm saying as far as, and that was fun and funny too, but um, that's what I'm talking about about as far as acting um as far as the physical aspect you have that and i don't want anybody to get this wrong just because there's role playing um and some acting and stuff like that doesn't mean you're not going to get hurt what they do in that ring is very real and i invite anybody to come in the ring and try it because that stuff that hurts. I have taken a, a couple of uh, bumps in my time, and um, here and there, just getting hit off the apron or something like that, and it hurts. It hurts if you land wrong, even if you land right, it hurts. Um, and that, that's exactly why my modeling agencies would not let me wrestle because of that physical um, uh, physical contact. And I wanted to, but they said, no, they even had a problem with me uh, managing. And I said, no, no, it, you know, that you're not going get, to get away with, you know, because they're afraid that you'll get hurt and you can't do sh shoots anymore. So I, I think there's uh, two, um, there is a physical line and then an acting line. Uh, you have the role playing as far as the acting, the skits, the interviews, uh, doing the promos, and then you have the physical attributes as as far as the ring, getting in the ring, you know, hit and fall and everything like that. So um, I think there's uh, both. There's both involved. And I don't want anybody to think this is a wimpy sport because it's not. That stuff is for real. They really hit for real. I know when I was taught, I had to slap people for real. And I, I did it. And I was known for my slaps. Nobody would take slaps for me. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to get that across because I've had people say, oh, wrestling's fake, hey, you can't get hurt and stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, well, come in the ring. And in most cases, they're hurting. They're like, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that, you know. So, yeah, there is um, acting and, um, and uh, physical contact as well. So, yes, there's both. Well, one of the, the keys to success in wrestling, and uh, I think arguably in any entertainment industry that you stated, is that you don't get involved with the demons of this industry. Um, every industry has demons. And not getting involved with the dark side of whatever can be very difficult because sometimes you can walk into something that's that's wrong or a situation in hot water and not even fully realize it until something has gone wrong. So handling your career in modeling, wrestling, acting, how do you stay away from those sticky situations that you may not necessarily be able to get yourself out of once you're in them? Um, basically, you stay out of them um, with common sense. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people that haven't 
had common sense and they have gotten in trouble. I don't know. I I have to be thankful for my parents for raising me right and being there. A lot of people don't have that. I understand that. Um, I kind of knew what to expect. I'm not saying I'm any goody two shoes, but believe me. But I'm 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 thankful that I did listen to my parents and you know knew what's right and what was wrong. And um, you have to have common sense and you have to have your gut feeling. If you know something's not right, if something bad can happen, you need to stay away from that situation. You need to remove yourself. Like I've always said, it's it's always who you hang out with. Like they say, if a dog hangs out with other bad dogs, it gets fleeced. It's, it's, it's true. If you're hanging out with something with bad karma, you're going to get bad karma. It's who you pick as who you hang out with friends, um, uh, no common sense, stuff like that. And, and it happens in wrestling. It happens in entertainment world. Like you said, it happens a lot in the entertainment world. Um, and it happens a lot in wrestling. And people just have to smarten up. They have to do their research. Um, if they know a situation's not good, Remove yourself from that situation right away. Because if you stick around and you know the situation is not good, chances are it's going to be a bad situation for you. Oh, definitely. And um, this is a new experimental question that I've been working on. And the first time I did it was my last interview, and it turned out very well, and it ties in loosely to the question I just asked. So... If you could give a piece of advice to any up-and-comer looking to make a big impact in the entertainment industry, whether it be wrestling or acting or modeling or whatever, but you had to sum it up in just one sentence, what would it be? Oh, wow. Uh, Because I'm a person that speaks a lot of words. I don't (laughs) just speak in one (laughs) sentence. Um, the only thing I can say, I'm trying to think about this. You really got me on this question is, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm back in school. Uh, (laughs) I guess, uh, uh, you can do it. You can do it if you stick with it. You can do it. God, it's basically if you can do it if you believe you can do it. And um, that's the best advice I can give. Um, you have to be, like I said, everything I told you about, but don't don't lose your dreams. Um, follow them. And, you know, don't let things discourage you. You're going to always get a lot of no, no, so don't be a quitter. You know, follow your dreams, but just be careful. That's probably we do have a couple minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> we do have a couple of minutes left, but before um, we get to how fans can contact you, uh, looking back at the success that you've had in the entertainment industry, I'm sure you um, felt really happy about the success you've gotten. But um, of course, everyone has dreams and desires to make it further, no matter where they are. So. How do you look at the situation you're in with happy thoughts and not think that, oh, I've wasted so much time and, oh, I should have, you know, done this or done that? How do you look back at your past memories in the entertainment industry and really be happy about what you've accomplished so far? Uh, I would say because life is too short, um, you have to look forward and never backwards. Um I think I've accomplished a lot. I'm very happy with it. Yes, there's more I can do, and I still have plenty of time. I'm still young. I could do it. Even if you were in your 60s, you can always follow your dreams. I've seen uh, women, men in their late 40s, early 50s still getting work out there. Um, Some people don't get their big break until they're 40 years old. I've heard stories about that, too. Um, So life is too short. You've got to take what it is today, and worry about your future. You can't worry about what happened yesterday. Yesterday's come and gone. 
you got to worry about your future and what the future holds for you. So you got to go with your goals, go with your dreams, and don't ever stop. Fantastic advice, and I'm sure a lot of people who listen to this interview will follow that advice because it is certainly uh, good advice. Um, so you you are very prevalent on uh, social me- media and social networking, and you do have a fan page and Twitter and a website. So how can uh, fans and uh, possible project opportunities uh, contact you to reach you about um, such things? Uh, they can reach me. I have a website, amyvitali.net. I have a Facebook fan page, Amy Vitali Fans. And I also have a Twitter page at, at Amy Vitale. So they can always reach me there. I'm very easy to find. And they can direct message me. They can uh, contact me that way, and I will definitely get the message, and I will respond. And whether it be fans that want to get a hold of me or future gigs, I'm there. I'm here. Yeah, I'm right here. So give me give me a shout-out. Well, definitely, and we'll we'll definitely give you a shout-out because I certainly had a good time um, conducting this interview, and Amy, you certainly sound like one of the most grounded individuals that I've ever spoken to, period, uh, end of story, and you should be very proud of what success you've reached so far, and I, I feel like you've only scratched the surface in what you've done, and that's saying a lot. So thank you so much again for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate your time taken out to interview me. Well, thanks to everyone else for checking out this interview. Be sure to check out www.wrestling-divas.webs.com, and that's Divas with a Z, for more content as well as my first interview with Amy. And be sure to check out Wrestling Divas on Twitter at Wrestling Divas, again with a Z at the end, for all the latest updates.